Hello and welcome. This is a tutorial for metal dot deal fracture and it has two parts. In the first part, I'm going to show how we can use the experimental data to calibrate a fracture curve. And then in the second part, I'm going to implement that curve in Abacus to predict ductile fracture of a cup and test. Uh, so uh, let's get us started with this tutorial and a very brief background. Actually, there are many resources and reference books that you can uh, refer to them for more comprehensive background theoretical, but uh, it's just a brief explanation that in most uh, phenomenological uh, ductile fracture models, for example, Johnson Cook, that I'm going to uh, explain this model in this tutorial, we normally need a function of uh, actually fracture strain with respect to the stress triaxiality. And uh, of course, there are many other uh, parameters that can affect the fracture and uh, we are not going to discuss them in this tutorial like strain rate, temperature, loading angle also is uh, one of the important ones but uh, let's keep it simple and just have a look on the um, relationship of the Johnson Cook in the Johnson Cook uh, formula we have a, a fracture strain as you can see as a function of triaxiality I call it a tau and uh, a strain rate and temperature. So to uh, use this uh, model, Johnson Cook, we need to calibrate D1 to D5 as uh, material parameters. So we need to calibrate them. In case uh, that we have uh, uh, just normal temperature and we are focusing on one strain rate, then we can ignore uh, these two terms, as you can see, and simply write uh, the Johnson Cook uh, uh, based on the stress uh, triaxiality ratio, as you can see. This is a, an uh, exponential function of the stress triaxiality. Then we need to calibrate D1, D2, and D3 as uh, material parameters. So this is the illustration of this formula, as you can see, exponential uh, relationship. And uh, in the x axis, we have uh, a tau triaxiality. And in y axis, we have a uh, fracture strain. What we need to draw this curve actually is a tree, not just a specimen that we tested before. And uh, they have different geometry of notch, actually different radius and the size of this radius and the notch can affect the triaxiality in the middle of the specimen. So uh, we will have three different uh, triaxiality and uh, three different uh, fracture strain, then we can fit this curve. And we normally need three of them to have an accurate uh, fitting. This is the normal procedure. And uh, as you can see, what we need, first of all, we need uh, a plastic flow curve. And we can obtain it based on the uh, uniaxial tensile test, also their numerical models. Based on them, we can calibrate the uh, plastic flow curve. When we have the flow curve, the plastic flow curve, then we can use it in uh, modeling of uh, tested notched specimen. And uh, then we can uh, apply the displacement control load on the end of the specimen up to the delta f that is the uh, displacement corresponding to the fracture of the specimen based on the numerical models of the notch of the specimen then we can extract a plastic strain and stress triaxiality ratio at the middle of the specimen at the center of the specimen at the minimum section as you can see this is the, the most critical uh, point in the specimen because the stress reactivity is higher at the ductile fracture uh, normally initiate uh, at this point. So what is the result? The result is a curve that shows a, a equivalent strain with respect to triaxiality ratio for the uh, loading story. And uh, so uh, what we have from this curve, this point, actually is uh, fracture strain. 
but uh, if we have a look on the this curve we need a point with a specific with a fixed uh, uh, stress to ultra ratio as you can see for each of these uh, specimens so what we can do here because we have a curve and the stress reactivity is changing because of uh, the geometry also is changing so uh, then we have to averaging uh, stress reactivity through the loading history to do so we can use this relationship this is actually a simple integral uh, of a stress reactivity with respect to plastic strain from a zero to a fracture strain divided by fracture strain this is some averaging actually it's better to say it's averaging so uh, and then we use this value as you can see the green uh, line to establish uh, this curve okay i will go to matlab and um, for demonstration i uh, will show how we can easily calibrate and fit the curve on uh, three dotted specimen results Okay, I'm going to use uh, MATLAB to do uh, uh, care fitting. So uh, I defined a strain for three uh, notched specimen and corresponding stress reactivity at the same place in the center of the specimen. They are just for demonstration the values. I mean, they are close to mild steel, but they are uh, uh, they are not realistic. So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, to use uh, the app curve fitter. Okay, then we have to select data. This is actually three axiology, the X data. And the Y data is uh, a strain, fracture strain that we have and close by default this is uh, a linear polynomial as you can see but what we want to do is changing it to uh, our equation that is an exponential equation so I will select the custom equation and I will uh, just uh, change everything uh, uh, similar to the uh, Johnson Cook uh, relationship that we have d1 d2 minus d3 uh, and here x is triaxiality and uh, y that is a uh, fracture strain as you can see so and this is the fitted curve and here we can control the accuracy this is very accurate because as I mentioned before these data are not uh, a realistic but uh, you might uh, get uh, some uh, error here and then you have the values for uh, d1 d2 and d3 calibrated and you can use it in uh, for example abacus to implement johnson quick model